Hello, beautiful people. This is Nura. Let's talk about the weekly themes for September 12th to 18th. So I'm calling this week Mutable Magic. And as a reminder that the alchemical winds of change begin always with a single choice. And Mutable Energy really invites in the process of choice. And then what does that look like for you? And so of course, where do you have Virgo? What has been being illuminated for you? where you have Virgo in your chart. Also, where do you have Pisces? We're coming in fresh from this full moon in Pisces, which I really think demarcated a lot of endings, beginnings. I know with the queen having passed, um, there's a lot moving through the field and it feels like it's, it's literally like that movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. That's really how I'm feeling and, and what I'm observing. And I think it's really important to do that mental processing, emotional processing around everything. And we might even feel a little bit like stunned or this um, sort of uh, nervous energy almost rumbling beneath the surface and really wanting to know what's going on, really wanting more information. Of course, we've got the sun in Virgo and Mars in Gemini. This square really brings tension of well, wanting to do something, Mars, and, and wanting to make a, a choice that's appropriate because Mars really initiates appropriate action. And Virgo really invites us to look at well, what is truly helpful and what is the right role of service for me in this moment? What serves me? How can I serve the moment that I'm in? All of these kinds of things. But there can be this frustration of not fully knowing what the hell's going on. <laughs> and then what do I do now? And I don't know what the hell's going on. So that's really, that's the mutable magic. Because being kind of stuck in this in-between place that's where the magic happens. That's where we really show ourselves what the work is. We show ourselves where the next steps are. And we can also maybe open up into more play and living in the present moment and knowing that this whole life experience is not meant to be um, boiled down to these linear steps that we're supposed to take. It, it, the, the path is not linear. And I think we're just being reminded of that big time right now and that there's so much more than meets the eye. So if we look at the transits for this week, well, a big one, September 14th, Venus is going to be entering the underworld at 12 degrees, two minutes of Virgo. So that's when she becomes 10 degrees from the sun and she'll continue to get closer and closer and closer to the sun until she forms that superior conjunction at 29 degrees Libra, October 22nd. And so she'll be in the underworld until she rises as the evening star, December 1st at 19 degrees Sagittarius. Here's our next mutable sign, right? So Within this Capricorn metagoddess cycle, knowing that that's the foundation, that's the overtone, or I like to really think about it as the undertone, like what is here throughout this whole 19 month Venus cycle, really asking us to look at our foundations. Um, what are we building? both individually and collectively, especially where we have uh, about 18 degrees Capricorn in our charts where this cycle began. And I like to look at the, the overall cycle and then zoom in and zoom out on the different parts of the cycle to get clarity around well, what's really happening. And if we think about where Venus is entering the underworld and where she will be exiting the underworld, reborn, refreshed, they're both in mutable signs. So Virgo, mutable earth saying, okay, what is the physical, tangible environment around me and how can I manipulate that? How can I uh, really discern what is helpful for me, what is not helpful for me in my immediate environment? And that includes how we're eating, that includes all the physical, the earth matter. Also what we're doing with our body, what we're doing with the earth and how we're doing it. And then of course, how Virgo relates with Capricorn, well, that's a trine energy. So I feel that moving through this and into this underworld is, is going to feel really welcome in a sense because we are becoming very aware like, okay, there are very specific tangible things in our environment that are not serving us long term. They're not serving us with what we're trying to build here individually and collectively. So we're going to happily uh, purge them, transform them, alchemize them, whatever it is. And then when we have Venus rising as an evening star in Sagittarius, it seems to me that we'll be having a completely different idea, a different perception around what is going on in our lives and what the meaning of it all is and how we can make purpose 
with and find a purpose or find the purpose that's been there all along, but now we can look at it and name it a little bit easier when we have Venus rising as an evening star December 1st. So right now, I think just knowing, like we're currently in the death by intent gate as I'm recording this and for the next four days or so, but as we shift into that underworld, know that we just did the death by intent. We're doing it on purpose. It's by design. And what's your relationship like with death? What is your relationship like with change? What's your relationship like with endings? And do you have faith? Do you have trust that what is ending right now is for the betterment of you, for the betterment of the ones you love, for society, for humanity, for our galactic civilization, right? There's a lot here happening. I pulled a couple cards, which I thought would be really interesting to share because they go with what I'm talking about. So Eight of Swords came up. I think there's going to be an opportunity to release victim mindset. And of course, that's not gaslighting. That's just accepting. Yes, maybe we have had horrible things happen to us. Absolutely. That's, you know, it's possible to have been a victim but to no longer live in victim mindset. That's what I think this card's all about. That's what I also think the opportunity is of this recent full moon in Pisces with the healing energy uh, involved and evoked and, and this opportunity to sort of dissolve uh, limiting karmic contracts. Also with goddess asteroid Juno hanging out, I think we get to just realize like we don't have to be a victim to past circumstances. We're also um, with the star here, there's a, a hopefulness coming but it requires that we release illusion with this Seven of Cups. And I think that this Seven of Cups card is really apt for the moment, especially given that there's just so much. <laughs> there's so much out there around, you know, theories of what's going on. And a lot of people saying, like, they know what's happening. And it's like, I don't think anybody knows what's happening. I think people have really strong ideas and also um, there's individuals who have their own direct experiences with their guides or um, with their own meditations and, and getting information in that way. And I do believe that there are people here who are meant to be informational leaders, but it doesn't mean that you have to 100% accept what everybody is saying. I think there's still a lot of importance on coming into that for yourself, like finding your own connection with information and um, learning some, some self-trust. I think it goes a long way when it comes to discernment because your body is the filter for truth. So with this mutable T-square being also lit up, so September 15th and 16th, uh, Venus at 13 degrees Virgo is going to oppose Juno retrograde at 13 degrees Pisces, and both of them are square Mars at 13 degrees Gemini, so this will be kind of a rolling mutable T-square. I would think actually even September 14th, same day that Venus enters the underworld, all the way through the 16th and into the 17th when we have the last quarter moon as well. And that's going to be in Gemini. So here we are with that mutable energy, that mutable emphasis again. So with this T-square between Venus and Juno opposing each other, both square Mars, I really think, again, this is an opportunity to uh, rewrite the story, really activate Mars, new agreements, Juno, that were emotionally opened at the full moon in Pisces. So what are the relationship dynamics that are coming up for you? Venus, square Mars. What are the karmic contracts and soul agreements that have been kind of dropped <laughs> into your field of awareness with this Juno retrograde in Pisces really being activated now with Venus, Mars? Like this is very relational. I also think um, I'm really seeing this... Um, collaboration, this cooperation between masculine and feminine um, starting to expand and intensify. And that could just be what I'm witnessing. You can let me know in the comments what you're witnessing around that. Uh, but it feels pretty good. It feels like, you know, when it's kind of like when everything is going kind of crazy in the world and you know it's easier to come together and know that you're on a team versus like, let's, you know, divide and conquer, which is what the powers that were or the powers that shouldn't be try to do to us, right? Um, especially men and women and, you know, the masculine energy and create and uh, feminine energy come together to create. We're so much more powerful. And I'm sensing that we're becoming like way more aware of that right now. And I'm really feeling it. And that feels very encouraging. And so even though Mars and Venus are square and there's like squabbles and interesting com 
competitiveness, I also feel like there's this opportunity here and, and it's coming together with this Juno energy, which is bringing healing, forgiveness in Pisces. It's, it's saying, okay, yeah, we've got our differences. We've got a lot of shit to heal. <laughs> Sorry for my language. Um, we've, we've got work to do, right? There's no denying that we have work to do to heal between the masculine and feminine, but we can do it with a sense of humor, with a sense of lightheartedness, with a sense of reverence for the hugeness of our story, the hugeness of how we got to where we are now, the hugeness of the rift, the hugeness of the wound. When we're so aware of that, we can almost say, well, of course, of course we would have these thoughts. That's, that's where the Pisces compassionate curiosity comes in. It's like, of course we got to where we are now. Of course we did. Look at history. Even, even though it's been wrongly written and huge chunks of truth have been purposefully obfuscated, like, of course we got to the point that we are now because of all of this. And so that's where the compassion comes in. And I think that's really uh, what can hold down the complexity of the mutable cross is, is remembering that, that um, Pisces uh, very wide lens vision. And um, so it seems like right now with Venus entering the underworld, it's going to be a lot of thoughts that are dying, especially with Mercury retrograde, like thought cycles, thought patterns, um, even subconscious uh, patterns that are kind of part of what create our, you know, top of mind thoughts, but it's, a, it's all deeper than that, right? And we know that. So all of this is getting stirred up and then mutable energy is spiral means it's got to get moving. If it's stagnant, you're not going to know it's there. You're not going to do anything with it. But if it's moving and you're like in a tornado and you're just seeing all these like flashes and pieces of your life or lifetimes just flash before your eyes, and you can kind of grab a piece over here and grab a piece over here and like look at them and be like, okay, I'm looking at them for one second. Okay, put them back. <laughs> let, let the cyclone keep going. But know that you are in the center still and stable and able to just observe. Look at it. Look at all that's coming up and grab on when it feels appropriate to grab on and then release when you're you know, you've done what you needed to do with that information. So that that's really the, the imagery that comes up for me right now. Like we're in a hot mess, but it can be um, it can be very empowering. We don't have to feel disempowered while we're in the middle of a hot mess. We can be that um, that lighthouse within the, the raging waters. We can be that the calm in the center. And it's all going to come down to mindset and what we're choosing. So this is that, you know, the alchemical winds of change are coming, but how you experience it, it all comes down to what you choose, who you decide to be, and that will inform what appropriate action you know that you need to do. Okay, I hope you have a beautiful week. Please let me know what's going on for you in the comments. I really love to hear from you. And uh, all right, we'll talk soon. Bye for now.